Today I want to talk about a problem that FPV is heading towards with ESCs and specifically ESC firmware. Now this year unfortunately we saw the end of BL Heli 32. Now the reasons for this are complex and things that I can't go into in this video but the very basics are we believe this was to do with geopolitical issues around the world and what I can say is no one would have wanted to walk away from what we believe to have been close to a one million dollar a year business but unfortunately due to certain situations it meant that they could no longer continue as a result of that we believed ESC manufacturers would start looking at alternative options such as the open source firmwares AM32 and Escape32 now, whilst some manufacturers have got on board, unfortunately, we've seen a bit of a trend of something that is rather unexpected, and that is manufacturers shipping ESCs with test versions of BL Heli 32 that was never intended for public use. Now, today, I want to talk about this a little bit and really give you the information that you need to make a decision because I can't tell you what you should do with your money. But what I can tell you is if we don't do something about this, we are heading for a particularly difficult situation in the future as a result of manufacturers taking the easy way out. Now, just before I get into this, I just want to say this video has not been sponsored, prompted by anyone. This video has been prompted by me and my annoyance that I've seen from manufacturers doing this. And I feel it's now time to put a bit of a line in the sand on this. And I'm also going to share with you my response and stance moving forward. OK, now to start this, I just want to give a brief history around BL Heli because there are some things you need to understand. And I just want to clear up some misconceptions here. This year, BL Heli 32 ceased because BL Heli AS, the business behind it, stopped trading. Now, as for the reasons for that, it is complicated. There are things that cannot be said publicly as a result of agreements. And the reality is it is a situation that no one would have wanted. And I mean no one, including the people behind it. Unfortunately, this meant BL Heli 32 had to stop end it is no more now it is worth me mentioning that bl heli 32 was closed source don't confuse it with bl heli s bl heli s was an open source version of firmware for escs designed to run on 8-bit escs however bl heli 32 was fully closed source fully proprietary and designed to run on 32-bit it is not open source. It is not in the public domain. It is not free software. Manufacturers who made ESCs using BL Heli 32 would pay a license fee per ESC. And that's how the funding of BL Heli 32 worked. Now, as I mentioned, BL Heli AS has ceased trading. However, BL Heli firmware has not changed ownership. It remains to be their IP. It remains closed source and it is not in the public domain. Whilst there may be ESCs out there that were manufactured before BL Heli shut down and are officially licensed, that is older stock that will remove through the supply chain. There is no new licensing of ESCs available from the point of shutdown. And we will end up now in a position where all of the older stock will move through and eventually there should be no more BL Heli 32 available. Now, I know there are many people who are angry and upset at the way all of this panned out. And there are many people who feel that BL Heli should have done a lot more. However, all of the information I have is that they were basically in an impossible decision. They literally had no paths available to them other than what they actually did. One day, the whole story will probably come out. But what I will say is, please don't think too badly about them, because the reality is this is a complex situation due to geopolitical issues around the world that no one was able to control. Now, this is the point where FPV is heading for a problem, because what should have happened was manufacturers turn around and start looking at what alternatives were available. There are two open source projects in the ESC world out there. We have AM32 and Escape32. Both 
have their features and benefits compared to the other, but there were definitely options for manufacturers to get on board with. Then they also had the option to go back to 8-bit and use BlueJay because let's be realistic here, 8-bit is still an extremely capable ESC and there really isn't a massive amount of reasons for general FPV that you would need 32-bit. Now sadly this isn't quite how it all panned out because whilst we have seen a lot of manufacturers get on board with AM32, a number of them have also started to ship ESCs with test versions of BL Heli 32 installed. Not so long ago on the channel I was sent an ESC to review from Sequoia. This came pre-installed with a test version of BL Heli 32. This is something that we hadn't seen before and since then we've started to see more and more ESCs and even bind and fly drones with ESCs ship with test versions of BL Heli 32 installed, usually either 31.10, 31.92 or any of the other versions that BL Heli have released in the past. What's even more concerning is we're even starting to see more and more bind and flies become available with this firmware installed. We have the new Gepsini Log 30 version 2, which I highlighted in my review, comes with this firmware. And Sequoia are even publicly stating that you can buy their new bind and fly drone with the BL Heli 32 test version installed. Now these versions were never intended for public use, they were provided by BL Heli to manufacturers for in-house testing of their ESC hardware so they wouldn't have to mess around with licensing in production. This test firmware is not designed for public use and whilst some of the versions do seem to match up with the publicly available versions, early versions I understand had some limitations in such as arming limits and they may contain all sorts of bugs that were never fixed because again these versions of firmware were never intended for public use. What's really frustrating about all of this is many of these manufacturers are actually working with AM32 to release firmware for their ESCs, but they are also shipping ESCs with these test versions of BL Heli 32. They should not be doing this. It is not helping anyone, and the reality is we need all of the effort to go into developing the open source projects and leave BL Heli 32 behind. There is no good reason any manufacturer should ship illegitimate software on an ESC to a user and it is not acceptable for them to place the burden of this onto the user. This software is not massively tested, there is no release notes, there is no future updates and you as a user are going to be left in a position where there is nowhere to go because even if they release targets for these ESCs in the future with AM32 available, you can't just flash it via USB. There is a way of doing it but it isn't easy for the typical user and as a result of that most people are going to end up stranded. Now I am aware of a lot of manufacturers have started to talk and get on board with AM32 but some of these as I've already said are people who are also sending out ESCs with this test firmware on board. You have the likes of GEPRC and Sakaya who are working with AM32 but also selling ESCs like this. I do know the likes of iFlight, Brother Hobby, Hobbywing, Beta FPV, Skystars as I've already mentioned, Flywoo, Speedy B, many others have started to get on board with AM32. The list is too big to go on about but the fact remains that a number of people are not only using AM32, but they are also shipping these ESCs as well. So again, we need to vote with our wallet on which ones we're going to purchase. I'm really disappointed to see manufacturers take this route and I find it completely unacceptable manufacturers installing illegitimate software on products to sell to the FPV community. They are benefiting from shipping products with this unlicensed firmware on and it is my opinion that we should not support any manufacturer who is doing this because in the long run this will cause harm to FPV because rather than them working with the likes of AM32 or Escape32 to develop the open source ESC firmware, we're seeing them take a shortcut and palm users off with unlicensed illegitimate software. Now what's really frustrating about this for me is the fact that manufacturers do have options. Many are getting on board with AM32 and I have seen a list that suggests that quite a few are starting to take notice but there is options for them and there's really no need for them to take this shortcut with regards to BL Heli. You have the likes of Skystars who have been making AM32 ESCs 
pretty much since the beginning. They're definitely a brand worth checking out because they make some really good hardware and they are a big supporter of the AM32 project. You've then got the likes of TBS who've released their Lucid ESC, again running AM32. And if you don't want to go down the road of one of the open source stacks, there are other options out there. You've got the likes of the Voltara, which has recently released this, whilst designed to be used with Kiss Ultra, it will work with Beta Flight as well. It's a fantastic ESC. You've got ESCs from FedTech and others. So there are lots of options out there. From a community perspective, you have the choices of going back to the likes of Blue Jay on 8 bit. Again, Blue Jay works really well, and there is no specific reason to be forced into supporting these manufacturers who are choosing to use this unlicensed firmware. Now, as a community, we are at a crossroads because if we continue to accept this, it will happen forever. Unless we vote with our wallets and show manufacturers that we are not going to support them installing illegitimate software, nothing will change. The open source projects will not get the traction they need to really continue to improve. We will not see more hardware like we've seen from the Voltara and others enter the market. And we will end up in a position where the firmware that we use simply is restricted because there is no development, there is no options, and in the end, this will just be bad for FPV. So, my stance is very simple on this channel. I will not endorse or support any product that has test versions of BL Heli 32 installed. Whilst I did review the GEP Cinelog 30 version 2 the other day, from this point forward, I will no longer review any product, whether it be an ESC or a bind and fly drone that uses the BL Heli 32 test firmware. Whilst many manufacturers won't care about this, my stance is very simple that we need to put a line in the sand. We need to tell these manufacturers no, and they need to get on board with the likes of AM32, Escape32, or even develop something of their own. But what we can't do is continue to let them palm us off with unlicensed software. Now, I know there are loads of people who really won't care about this. All they care about is being able to use their drones. But again, my point about this video is that if we don't put a stop to this now, it will cause us harm in the future. I've never been a person who has issues with people installing hacked or cracked software on their devices, but there's a dramatic difference between a user doing it and a business selling you a product with that installed. And again, we need to nip this in the bud before all of these manufacturers simply think this is acceptable, it becomes the norm, and then we end up in a position where we're locked into a firmware that will no longer ever be developed. Now, I'm really interested in knowing what you think about this. There are links below to some of the manufacturers of ESCs that I know are supporting the project, but also have legitimate software as well. As I've said already, the likes of Skystars, you have the Volterra with their own firmware. There are lots of good options out there available. Support the brands who are doing this properly and vote with your wallet for the ones who are not. Now, before I wrap this up, I just want to say if you'd like to support the channel to allow me to keep making content, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. We would not be able to do this without your support. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to be able to make controversial, difficult content like this that does call out manufacturers, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.